Continuing on with our BRICS 101, all about the fundamentals of getting started and up and running, today we're going to take a look at global classes, one of the big strengths that you have in BRICS Builder. Now we're going to break this down into three different sections. The first section is all about what global classes are. Then we're going to take a look at some examples of how you can use global classes and the various different ways in which we can incorporate them into our overall design process. And finally, we're going to talk about the benefits of using CSS global classes in any kind of project. OK, so first of all, let's kick things off with the first section. What are global classes? Now, global classes are reusable pieces of code in your website style sheet that define styles for elements across your entire site. You can think of them as things like style templates. You can apply to different parts of your website to make it look consistent. So, for example, you create a global class called button. And you define rules such as the background color, the text size, the padding, and so on. Then every time you add that class, the button class, to a button on your website, it'll automatically look the way you styled it in your CSS. Now, you may be asking, why is this helpful? Well, first of all, consistency. You only need to define the style once, and it will apply everywhere you use it. It also opens up easier updates. So if you want to change the style, you only need to edit the class in one single place. Then every way it's being used will reflect those changes. It also saves time. There's no need to rewrite the same styles over and over again. So now we've defined what global classes are, let's move on to some practical examples in this stage. So let's keep with the analogy of using buttons as part of our styling. I've created two buttons inside Bricks itself and removed any kind of styling. All they have is button one and button two written in them. So let's go and create our first global class. So how do we do it? It's very, very simple. If you come over to the left-hand side with a button selected, you'll see we've got this area at the top which allows us to create global classes. So all we need to do is click inside, and from here we can either select any global class we've previously created, which we'll take a look at in a moment, or we can create a new global class. So let's create our first class. Let's call this BTN Primary. We're going to hit the Enter or Return key, and we've now created our class. You can see if we take a look at the top, it's now highlighted in yellow, and we can see underneath what class or classes, if we have multiple classes associated with any element, are associated with it, and which is currently active, will be highlighted in yellow. So now we've created this, let's go and make some changes. So let's go into the Style section, let's go into our background, let's apply a background color, let's set it to this kind of reddish orange, and you can see that now picks that up. Let's come into our typography. Let's set this to be white. Let's change the style as well. Let's make this just a little bit more bold. And while we're at it, let's just round the corners off. So now you'll see our first button has been styled the way that we want it. The second button has no styling applied to it. That's because we haven't associated this with any global classes. So let's change that now. Let's come and choose our second button. And all we need to do is come over to where we can select our classes. And you can see if we click inside, there's our primary button. Let's select it, and immediately it picks up all the styling that we've configured. Now, this is where the benefit starts to show. We've got two buttons styled exactly the same. We haven't had to do anything to the second button other than apply that global class to it. But let's make a change. doesn't matter which button we've got selected. As long as we have the class selected for any button or element, we can make changes to it. So now let's come down to our background and say, we don't want this reddish color. We actually want it to be blue. Click, and now both of those update in real time. This is where we start to see the benefit of using global classes. But you may be thinking, but does this only affect this particular page? No, anywhere we're using that global class, anywhere throughout an entire site, in templates, pages, no matter what, wherever it references it, we make a change in one instance, and everywhere will be changed. So in this example, if we had this button being used across our site for various different sections, and we set that global class and associate it with our buttons, every button would be changed to blue. It's as simple as that. Now, you may also be thinking, well, that's great, Paul, but what if I want one of my buttons to pick up some of the things that we've set, for example, the background color, the bold typography, and so on, but I want to make some changes to it. No problem at all. As long as that global class is not selected, so we'll just deselect it by clicking on its name, we can now make changes to this button. So for example, if we come over to the button and we'll say we want to go into the typography and we want to make our text just bigger, we can do just that. So what we need to do is come in and we'll say for this example, to rem, and now we have a bigger button. 
Why? Because we are no longer editing the global class. We're just editing the specific instance. Now, another thing you may be thinking, that's cool. But what if I want to make the text lighter on this particular button? No problem at all. Again, making sure that we don't have the global class selected. We can come into our typography, come in and say, let's set this to be 300. And now what we've done is we've overridden the value that we have set up inside that global class. So what this basically means is we're using CSS specificity. Now that sounds really complicated, but all it means is that anything we set inside the global class, in this example, BTN primary, we can override it on an instance by instance basis by making changes as long as that class is not selected. Therefore, we're not making a global change. We're making an instance change. We're just changing the instance of this one button. So we can override it. Now, specificity says that what we set inside here, inside these settings, is more specific, higher ranking, as it were, than we have set inside the global class. Hope that makes sense to you. So now that we've seen this, let's move on to a slightly more comprehensive example. So for a more comprehensive example, I've created a basic layout for a card design, something you're going to see very typically on most websites. We've got a heading, an image, some text, and a button. We're also going to look at what's called BEM naming to name each of these sections, which we can then apply to our classes. This just means that when we are working with either ourselves in a team or handing this off to someone else, we're using a standardized way of naming things. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about what BEM naming is, but I do have a link in the details down below to an article that will give you all the basics you need to understand how it works. But it's very, very simple. OK, so let's first of all give these classes, which we can then start styling. So first of all, we're going to name this card. So we're going to change this from block. We're going to call it card. I'm going to come over to our classes with the card selected. And we're simply going to type in card. So now we want to go to our elements, our heading, image, rich text, and button, and so on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use that BEM naming convention. So we're going to select our heading. We're going to come over. We named our overall block card, so we're going to say card. We're going to use two underscores, and we're going to put in heading. So that's the basics of BEM naming. We've got the card, which is our block, and we've got the heading, which is our element. So we're just going to simply press the enter or return, and we've now created our second class. So we do the same thing for our image. So we're going to come over, call this card underscore underscore image for our text, card underscore underscore, let's call this excerpt. And finally, our button, we're going to just name this card underscore underscore button. So now we've created five different classes. We've used BEM naming to name them. So we've got a consistent set of classes associated. So now we can start styling things. So for example, let's come over to our heading. You'll see we've got our styling. Let's select this, go to our styles, come into our typography. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set our font size. We'll set this to 4 rem. You can set a color if you want to. So we'll set it to be this blue color. We'll change, set this to be 500. And we'll specify it's capitalized. And any other values you want to set inside you. Anything you set inside this left-hand panel will be applied to that class as long as it's selected. Let's move on now to our image. So we'll select this, select the actual class itself. Come into our content. We can do things like set our aspect ratio. So let's say we want this to be 16 by 9. We'll choose how we want this to fit. So we'll say cover. You can set anything else you want inside there as well. Let's come into our styles, for example. Let's come into our borders. From there, we'll just round the corners off just to get it, make it look a little bit nicer. Then we'll come into our text, select the class, come to our typography. We'll set this to be 6 rem. And we'll just leave it at that. But again, like I said, you can set whatever values you want inside here. And finally, we'll choose our new button. We'll select this card button and we'll apply some styling to it. So for this example, let's come into our layout. We'll lock our sides and we'll set the left and right hand sides to be zero to get any spacing there. There we go. We've now got our button basically set up. So we'll come into our typography. We'll set this to be all uppercase, for example. We'll make it a little bit heavier. And we'll pop an icon in front of it. So we've now created a styling for our button as well. So we've now created a really ugly looking card design. So let's go and create another one, but without applying that styling to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to just go to our elements. We'll add another block in. And inside there, we're going to just basically insert the exact same elements. 
Okay, so we now have a second card using exactly the same structure. So we expand these out. You see they've both got exactly the same structure inside each one of them, but they look completely different. However, if we just go and apply our classes to these, they'll start to pick up the styling. So for example, we come to our block, we'll apply card, come to our heading, and you see as soon as I select them from the list, they immediately pick up the styling that we've applied and we don't have to do anything else. So now if we wanted to make changes to any of these, let's say for example, I don't like the look of the heading, all I need to do is select that heading, any one of the headings, doesn't matter which one it is, select the class, come to our styling, let's set that to be a black heading, let's just say we want this to be lighter, we wanna make it smaller, no problem at all, easily done. So now let's take a look at how we can apply styling to something that currently doesn't have any styling applied to it. For example, if we choose the card, making sure the card is selected from the classes over in the top left-hand side, let's come into something like the layout. We'll group our padding together and set something like two rem padding. You can see that both of those pick that up. We can come into, for example, our background and apply a background color here. So let's go for this light gray. As you can see that's picked that up. Come to our borders, set those up on here. You can see just how easy this is to add in. And then anytime we want to use these, we just need to make sure we apply that same class. And again, if we want to override any particular values inside you, we can do it on an instance by instance basis by making sure we don't have the actual global class selected. As a bit of a bonus, I want to introduce you to a different type of global class. We're going to call these utility classes. Now, this is a very simple example. And if you'd like me to go into more detail about this, let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll create something if enough people are interested. So we've seen how we can set up a global class and we've applied these to the various different elements. But let's say we want to have the ability to create a drop shadow effect and we want to apply it to different things as and when we want to. So for this example, we want to apply it to the overall card, but we could also apply it to the button, to anything we wanted. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to come over and we'll choose our card design, click inside, and we're just going to call this, we'll call it Shadow SM, because we can create multiple different versions of this. We can have one for shadows that are small, medium, large, for different effects. You kind of get the idea. So we'll hit enter like we've done before, and now you'll see we've created a new global class. We've applied this alongside the card to this particular card design. But all we're gonna set up inside you is the drop shadow effect. So we'll open up the drop shadow, set the values we want. Doesn't really matter too much what we're gonna put inside you. And we'll set our color. We'll choose this dark color and we'll adjust the opacity. So now we've applied that second global class, like I said, we'll call a utility class because it only does one thing. We're gonna apply it to anything we want. So now you can see we've got our first one has this really ugly drop shadow, but let's say we select this button. What we can do is we can come up, we can apply the class there as well. So now we've applied a really ugly example to both the button and the card itself. Now this is a very simple example of a utility class, but you could create utility classes for lots of different things. If you use a framework like Core Framework, for example, utility classes are used an awful lot there. The only downside to using these is that you can end up with having an awful lot of classes applied to a specific element to do certain things. So you have to be very methodical about where and when you would use them. Personally, I don't use them an awful lot, but they're there should you want to use them. I would recommend, like I say, taking a little look into this, and if you want more info, let me know. Okay, so we've now seen how to create our global classes, how to create utility classes and apply them and so on. But what happens when you want to come down to managing those classes? You maybe create some, you want to organize things, or you maybe want to delete things that you've tested, but you don't want to use them again. Well, all we need to do is come up to the new option that we have, in the very recent versions of Bricks, which is the Classes and Variables Manager. So now inside here, you can see we've got Classes and Variables. If you wanna learn about variables, there's a video I've got here, you can check that out, link in the description as well. So now what we can do is we can filter these, we can sort them, we can filter, search, all those kinds of things. Then we've got Categories, so we can organize these, and we'll take a look at that in a moment. All our classes then listed, we can create a new class from here, and if we choose one of the classes, you'll see this opens up the edit option. And now we can rename this, we can lock it, we can duplicate it, and we can see how many are selected and any previews. So if we want to, we can select multiple. 
And then we can rename these if we want to. So you may want to put like a prefix or something. You could do that here. So pretty cool. Want to create a new class? Simply click inside here and start creating the class. Want to export these to use in a different project? You can click to export the individual class, different selected classes or all the classes. And again, you've got options at the top to do import and export. And if you want to, we can organize things. So let's just say we want to create one for utilities and we'll call We'll have one for general global classes. So we know that our shadow is a utility class. So we can see drag that over, drop that into utilities. And now that's been added in. You can see we've got one inside there. And now we can select all of these and we can just simply drag these into the general. So now you can see we can easily see what is organized inside here. So there's our global classes. We've got six. There's our utility classes. We've got one. Want to rename this? Click edit, rename, delete, whatever you kind of want to do. There's a bunch of options inside here to manage your classes and so on. Once you finish making your changes, hit that save and you are done. So the benefits of using CSS global classes. Well, this is just going to give you the basics what I've covered today. There's more than enough here to get your feet wet and get you up and running with hopefully understanding how they work and also understand the basics of using BEM naming. Again, like I say, article in the description down below for more info. So again, let's recap. What are the key benefits of using global classes inside a tool like Bricks Builder? So first of all, we've got consistency. By using CSS global classes, you can ensure a consistent design on any page that you want to use where you apply those global classes. So like we've seen with the card design, anywhere we use that card design using the same naming convention and the same global classes will mean that any change we make will be reflected site-wide. So this leads us on to the second benefit, efficiency. You can see by making changes in one location, we can globally change the look of an entire site or very specific elements. So if you want to create a dark mode version or a light mode version, you could easily just change a couple of global classes and have a completely different look to your overall design all in one simple location. And finally, we've got flexibility. By using global classes, it opens up a ton of flexibility to allow you to make sweeping changes, but also you could just use this to test different design ideas out and see how it reflects all over your entire site. And if you like it, you can stick with it. If you don't, you can simply revert it back to what it was before and all those classes will update accordingly. Now you could expand upon what we've covered in global classes by using CSS variables to give you even more flexibility. And if you wanna learn how to use those, and how to use those in conjunction with classes like we've covered today, check out this video next. If you want to just learn more about working with Bricks, you can check out learnbricksbuilder.com, link to everything in the description down below. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.